When we started our businesses, we thought that because we were great plumbers, that would translate into being great business owners. But that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, successfully operating a home service business has very little to do with the trades. Hey guys, I'm Tony Wally. And I'm Matt Baldwin, and this is The Coach's Corner, a podcast dedicated to helping you create a thriving business and stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. Welcome to the show. What's going on, Matthew? Not much. How you doing, Tony Wally? Oh, good. You know, I feel like I'm dressed like like I'm about to go play golf. And I, you know, you and I haven't played golf together in a while. <laughs> and I and I'd like to. And I miss it, if I'm being hey, honest. Maybe we'll maybe we'll play golf after this meeting. I mean, and how would we do that? Like I'm in I'm in Mobile and you're in New Jersey. I'm in Mobile, Alabama. I, I just assume everybody knows where Mobile <laughs> is. I think everyone knows. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I think we just hop on a plane and meet halfway. Yeah, or we could just play VR golf. Like we, oh, always... we play VR golf. Yeah, yeah. I wear yeah, this we... when we play VR golf. Do you wear your golf shoes too? You go outside and stand on the lawn with your golf shoes on. No, because you have to draw that. You have to draw that <laughs> boundary. And I'm too far. My Wi-Fi is not that strong, but I would because I've, I've, I've literally almost knocked everything off my mantle. Um, swing in the golf club. You know, we have that golf handle. You know, we got we both have that mm-hmm. that that golf handle, and that it can get out of hand, man. Especially if if you get up two or three holes. Uh, I mean, I start, I start really getting. You know, you have to you have to really. It's just a game of of whoever makes the fewest mistakes with me and you. You know. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, because we always play novice. We don't play pro, so. <laughs> No, no, no one's got time for that. We we want no. we want to shoot like twenty two under on Pebble Beach. Yeah, <laughs> I gotta have I gotta have the yellow line so I can read the putts. And if I leave my club face open like I always do, I don't want to pay the price for it. I mean, this is virtual reality. Yeah, I mean we had to we had to pay the price enough in real life, so yeah. we don't want to do that when we're in our living rooms. I mean, I don't like I don't like real golf as much now because of the the ease i mean i feel like a pro in vr <laughs> yeah it's really it's a nice feeling right yeah i mean I, and then I, with, a, with a lot less work right i don't want to go back i don't want to go back to reality <laughs> no yeah listen cool. tell me this tell me this i'm gonna say this and you let's talk about this let's just riff on this so and and the reason i'm going to say this is because the the people that we talk to on a daily basis there is a lot of fear in the conversation. You know, there are a lot of, you know, most of the people that we talk to are just starting their business or they're trying to grow their business from a one truck operation. And there is a lot to it. So, yeah. and I don't have who quote quoted this, but I will say this. It wasn't me. Fear is your inability to manage your own thoughts. Fear is always something that is yet to happen. Most of the time we are suffering over something that does not exist. What does that mean to you as it pertains to business? So fear as it pertains to business is, I mean, it's anticipating a negative outcome, right? So it's anticipating that you're going to implement some sort of change, Mm -hmm. uh, whether that be, like we talked about on previous episode, hiring people or firing people or, you know, a new type of marketing. Right. Um, So yeah, the list goes on and on. Yeah. It goes on and on and on, but basically it all boils down to when you're projecting what that's going to look like three months, five months, six months down the road, you're anticipating that being a failure. Um, And it's not even a reality yet. No, no, it's not a reality at all, but You don't, I mean, hopefully it's going to be a success. There's a chance that it could be a failure, depending on what we're talking about. I feel with, you know, hiring, it's like a 50-50, right? Like, we're just throw a dart. (laughs) We can do all the due diligence we want, but at the end of the day, we're just throwing a dart, hoping it sticks to the wall. Um, But, uh, you know, there's other things that, like, you know, if if we're going to talk about, like, marketing, right? Like, there's, there's proven things we can do that we don't have to be, we don't really even have to be fearful about how they're going to work out. But most of us, I believe, come from like a scarcity mindset. 
um, which creates, it directly conflicts with being a business owner. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because your brain is wired for survival. Yeah. Like, have you ever heard, I know you, I know you listen to a lot of stuff like this, but when you, when you, a lot of, a lot of tactical, like military guys will talk about this. Like when you walk into a room, your brain is already naturally wired to look and find a threat, right? Yep. So when you walk in, you're scanning the room, whether you know it or not, to see if there's a threat. So when when that translates into business, it's just natural to to try to run from things that that are going to cause us harm. And in business, everything can cause you harm. You know, you can hire that yeah. bad that bad seed. You can dump money into somebody that promised you a bunch of SEO and and websites, and now you can't get back in touch with them. Um, the list goes on and on. Um, but you just you can't anticipate and talk yourself out of it. That's why one of the one of the oldest things, uh, one of the oldest sayings in in the world is is kind of a cop out. It's like you can't find good help. I mean that's yeah. that's somebody trying to stay safe, but they're scared. I mean I think that people are scared when they say that they're scared to take a chance on somebody. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that's just one example, but, you know, the, the fear in itself, um, you know, it's, it's a constant evolution, I'll say. Uh, I'm not scared of the things I was two years ago, but there's new fears that come up. Um, and maybe, we, you know, we can kind of get into that for you and me, what that looks like, right. Yeah. On, a, on a higher level. Um, yeah. But if, if we keep it at the fear when you're either first starting your company, right. Or, the fear, you know, why don't you talk a little bit about how, how you felt when you first were starting your company? I know it was a long time ago, but you know, you've been in business like 16 years now, right? Yeah. 17. Yeah. Yeah. So, but just try and think back and to the best of your ability, what were some fears that surrounded that? Well, you know, for starters, and, and we've talked about this before, but the, the, the fact that you have to, you have to have help. So you, you can't be scared to, higher help. And, and we have a whole nother episode on that. So I won't stay on that, but that is, that is one of them. And um, the fact that you have to let somebody else touch the, the work that you are responsible for, you know, how many times did you walk back into the house and check that, that angle stop before you actually left the service call because you were so scared that something might happen? You know, that's a fear. That's a fear. And, and, and the reality is you really did it right the first time. You did it right, and and nothing nothing's going to happen most of the time. Um, but as you, <clears throat> I can talk about it as it pertains to the Success Academy from Module One all the way through. Not so much Module Twelve because that's kind of cruise control. But well, it's cruise yeah. control for your business. But I think that that might be a good spot for us to just touch a little bit on, you know, what what kind of fears do we still have in our lives today? Because don't let me forget imposter syndrome. Yeah, no, but I, I, I think it's important for us to highlight that, like, just because, you know, we're business coaches or just because we have multi-million dollar companies, like fear is still present and it may not even be related to you. It might be related to your business. It might not be related to your business, but I think it's important for us to kind of, uh, you know, relate. Let's We'll use that to relate to uh well and admit relate. that it's still there. Well, yeah, admit that it's still there and then you know, kind of relate that like, you know, we understand what you're going through, right? We understand, uh, because we still go through it. We're not we're not immune to fear. Yeah, and I think that the common denominator, whether you're in module one or you actually have graduated from the success academy and you're doing all the things, the com <clears throat> the common denominator is that you are mentally tough enough to handle the things that happen to you in business. I mean, do you remember when we talked about you having that explosive growth period last year? Mm -hmm. And we even talked about you had a mentality or you developed up the mentality that you're never going to be slow again. And then yeah. boom, all the jobs stopped. And yeah. it's, um, really quickly you go back you revert back to you know man maybe maybe that was all just a 
What did it feel like? I don't want to answer for you. What did it feel like when you were just, you were insulated from the, the fear of not having work. And then all of a sudden yeah. it came right back. Yeah. So it was, it was kind of strange because we were going through aggressive growth. Um, and I mean, like I'm talking, we hired like four, maybe four, five people in like a three month period, um, technicians, you know, like we, we, we really kind of exploded. Um, so I did all that and it was at what is typically one of our low points of the year for our call volume. Um, and that's, that's a little trick that I kind of ripped off from Mr. Matt Delney, um, is that it, it's, it's a good time to hire when you're slow because if you're slow, everybody else is slow and people get uncomfortable when they, when they're not out doing jobs. Right. So yeah. they start looking for other places to go work. Um, so I capitalized on that and I added a whole bunch of people expecting it to be slow, right. Expecting to have to find some work for them to do. Um, but we, you know, we were getting a new shop set up. We were getting a new office set up there. I, I figured it was a good time because we, we needed, we needed some time where we we're going to be putting shelves together and stock in the shop and stuff like that. Um, and then the slow time never came. Um, you know, we actually wound up having like a record month and then another record month and then another record month, um, all the way through, you know, that slow time all the way through the summer, which is our crazy busy time. And it was just every month was a new record month. And then we get halfway through August and the phones just shut off. Um, Can I just secretly admit to you that whenever you kept having those record months, you know, at first I was like, man, that's great. And early in the year, I was telling you, Hey man, I had this. And you were like, man, congratulations. And then you kind of passed me up right in the middle of the year. And I was like, I was saying congratulations, but I was like, man, this is something. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I digress. Yeah. I did, well, there was actually a point there that I, I actually, I think I said it to you even, I, I actually stopped telling you. Like no, I, I know just, exactly I'm, what I'm, you did because I said, "Hey man, um, <laughs> where where are you at this month?" And you were like, oh, oh, "Oh, I don't even want to tell you." Oh, I was like, "Oh man," I wasn't trying to be a dick about it. I was trying to protect your feelings. You were having like a real slow. You were going through one of your real slow times, yeah. and I was in what is my busiest month out of the year. Oh man, and the volume we were doing was outrageous. Uh. Well, it's not really? your modus operandi to look out <laughs> for somebody's feelings. I just want to put that out there. You know. Well, that's why that's probably why I came across as if I was not being nice. Uh, but I really was trying to be nice. Oh, anyway, uh, let's move past that. Um Yeah, please. <laughs> Hey, plumbing pro, you wouldn't plumb a house without a blueprint. So why are you trying to build your plumbing business without one? Grab your free copy of my Million Dollar Plumber Blueprint. In it, I lay out the exact specs on how to build a successful, self-sustaining, and very profitable plumbing business. Don't risk years of waste of time and money and failure. Grab your Million Dollar Plumber Blueprint now, and it's free. My gift to you for simply being a Coach's Corner follower. Go to themilliondollarplumber.com forward slash free and plumb like a champion the buck stops at some point right and the phone shut off in august um and they really didn't you know we were really at like three or four calls a day uh for about a month and a half yeah um with eight eight guys uh that's not a comfortable place to be in um so that that i mean that created all sorts of fear right I mean, you talk about this, right? Like the more, you know, we talk about it in like a money aspect, like the more money I have in the bank, the more afraid I become that it's all going to just disappear one day. Yeah, that um, is, uh, that is so true. And it's, it's even more so. And, and that's a, that's a way to self-destruct, you know, because that does happen. And, and that's not so much self i mean that's not so much imposter syndrome we'll talk about that but the paranoia that comes along with actually running a successful company and and doing things the right way you really have to you really have to sort that out and we've we've spent a lot of time talking about 
that amongst each other. And and yeah, you know, Matt Delnay, we we are we 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 were in Matt Delnay's private coaching group, and one of the things that he said was, you just have to be able to stomach the numbers that are coming down the pipe because when you initially become Google guaranteed and Google verified. I think my I think my monthly or my weekly budget was like two hundred bucks, and then you learn your budget has to be way bigger than that. You know, if you want the phone to keep ringing, and then mm-hmm. you know you go from two hundred to an ungodly number that you just can't fathom. It's so counterintuitive because what if all the what what if what if we did use the budget? You know, well if you use the budget, you you have to be able to. Uh, there's a whole system in place. You have to answer the phone. You have to triage the call. You have to be able to get to it. That's why there is a, there's just a building block process that you can't, you can't freak out in the first, in the beginning stages and say, you know what, man, this, this is not going to work. You got to have the, you got to have the nerve to keep on going, even though it hasn't started working yet. Yeah. And it's, it's like that, you know, I think if real quick we could kind of run through the 12 modules and we could kind of just relate, you know, how some fears happen in there. Um, But, uh, you know, there, there's different, there's different levels of fear at every, every turn, right. There was a lot of, you know, we, we use the, the, um, the analogy of like climbing a mountain, right. Yeah. And like starting a module run one, right? Like the right price, right? We got, we got to figure out what our HHR is. We got to start to learn, rewire our brains to think about money a certain way. Um. So if we, if you talk a little bit about that, like what what's the mountain there, right? What's the mountain of the right price and where's the fear with that? Well, the, the the fear, the mountain is you're used to somebody telling you that there is a going rate, you know, and I was conditioned to believe that the customer's right. This this shouldn't cost more than $200, no matter what it is. This is $200. And that is a mentality that will keep you in the truck. It'll keep you barely paying your bills if if you're able to pay your bills and it'll keep the customer happy. But there has to be a mutual thing where it's not just the customer that that's happy because you may feel like you may feel like the customer is using you because you're such a great, a great Mm. person or great plumber. I mean, I felt that way, but that's not the case. You raise your prices enough to where you're covering all your costs and there's going to be some pushback there. Mm -hmm. And the average customer, if you just go in and try to charge what you're worth, they're not going to understand. And they're going to think that you are, you know, ripping them off. But I mean, the reality is that most plumbing companies are run by plumbers and not business minded people. And they're not charging enough and they probably won't be around the next time the customer needs them to either come back and do something else or warranty Mm -hmm. the work that they did, you know, on and on and on. So that was the big fear there. I mean, when you, when you put the numbers, you put the pen to the paper and you, you realize what the expenses are that you have currently. And you stop taking the advice of that person that's sitting in the supply house that's saying, yeah, um, this is what we charge for a water heater with no explanation and then you yeah. try to undercut that that's going to that's going to send you to the poor house yeah. trust me <laughs> real real quick <laughs> I've been in, man man have i been there yeah uh, but the yeah, me too. um yeah i mean that, that that's real it's a real simple one it's just like you know wrapping your head around the fact that you you've been conditioned to to live with a scarcity mindset you've been conditioned to think that making a profit or having money or anything like that is wrong right like yeah you know oh the, those rich people those rich people those rich people you know like how how many times in your in your 
plumbing career or your life has some you've you've heard of or someone said you know oh i just got a new car or a new truck or oh we just bought a house and the immediate reaction of the blue collar person right is oh must be nice yeah M I've must heard be nice so many must times. be nice must be nice to have money right um yeah. when in reality you can have money too it's yeah. attainable for everybody it's just that we're we're conditioned and and this starts all the way back in like kindergarten or first grade right like we're conditioned that blue collar right not going to college or going to college and then being blue collar is somehow a bad thing right and they start they start to to say this to you and i actually just saw something this morning it was like one of those little memes that you see online and it was uh how come how come the teacher never told us when they were telling us that if we didn't do our schoolwork we were going to end up as a garbage man that the garbage man actually made more money than them <laughs> <laughs> yeah well and that, yeah. that's just like a funny little anecdote and not to like put anyone off or anything like that but it's like there's nothing wrong with being blue collar you can make money yeah absolutely and there was a big push back when I was in high school and just coming up, you know, I'm 45 years old and there was, you know, like in the guidance counselor's office and Mike Rowe talks about this from, from dirty jobs. He talks about the, the almost like the smear campaign against blue collar workers from, you know, if you're in the guidance counselor's office and there are two pictures hanging up, one is of a guy dressed in a, a, a nice uh, white collar suit. And then the other is a dirty mechanic and they pit the two against each other. Do you want to go to college and be like this guy, the guy that's clean mm -hmm. and, and and upstanding, or do you want to be like yeah. this guy and all, and, and that's a huge reason why there is so much college debt with so many, so much competition and a, a college degree is not very hard to come by anymore. And it's not, it's not very valuable in, in relation to, the, the blue collar opportunities that are there that you can make a great living and an upstanding, gratifying living. Um, and we were told that you don't want to be this guy, the guy that's dirty. And yeah. And a little side note before we move on, because we're going to try and get through all the modules, I guess. Um, but a little side note to that is with success comes, you know, entering Richard talks about entering like a new room, right. As you become more successful, right. Yeah. You leave the the plumber room and then you're in the CEO room and then so as as we go into these different rooms and now we're around more successful people i would say probably eight out of ten of the most successful people that i know didn't go to college yeah um so and, and i think it's a big distinction like you go to college and and not to bash college it's, it's for some people right like if you're gonna be a doctor or a lawyer like you just want to be a teacher because you want to help people. You want to educate people. That's fine. But, yeah. um, you know, I think that the people that don't do well in the school system are the perfect candidates to be entrepreneurs. You know, we, we joked around on one of our episodes about ADD and that's just <laughs> kind of like, that's how we roll, right? Me and you, we're just, we start talking and we can go off on 10 different things and then we'll bring it back all back at the end. Um, but, uh, you know, if you can learn to kind of harness that a little bit, um, it's like a, it's like a superpower when it comes to being an entrepreneur because that's where all great marketing ideas come from, um, expansion plans, stuff like that, new business ideas. Um, they're in the daydreaming. Automate your company's day-to-day -day scheduling, dispatching, and billing systems with Service Titan. Service Titan is the world's leading all-in-one field management software for home service businesses looking to improve efficiency and profitability. Just ask the Coach's Corner listeners who have made the move to Service Titan. Not only have they saved thousands by eliminating time spent on profit-sucking manual tasks, but they now have scalable processes in place to help grow their business for years to come. To check them out and to take advantage of special discounts for Coach's Corner listeners, Go to themilliondollarplumber.com forward slash service titan. Yeah, absolutely. And and I should I should probably say the same thing you said about that. I, I I'm not bashing college degrees at all. I have one. And have I used it? I think I've used a lot of the time management that I learned in college. But as far as the coursework, I mean I have a I have a bachelor's in um 
communication and a, and a minor in, in marketing. And I don't remember what I learned in marketing. So well, now that it's time to use marketing, I just I don't have to learn it all over again. Uh, but there, there, there's something to be said for for that, and I and I don't I don't mean to bash anybody that that wants to further their education. I just I just take a I just take issue with the logic that learning a trade leads to a life of struggle, and you're always dirty everywhere you go. I just couldn't, and yeah. I tell my guys that all the time. And I and, and you're right. A lot of the people that I listen to are high school dropouts and they're very successful and there's also something to be said like if you can't if you can't concentrate in a timed test situation that shouldn't rule you out from ever being successful and i think that speaks to what you're talking about like Mm -hmm. those are perfect candidates for for uh, being able to focus and be mechanically inclined and fix something focus on something until it's fixed you know I don't have any scientific data to, to, to back that up. I just know that I have spent my life in the blue collar trades and <clears throat> some of the most successful people that I've come across, they don't have a a high school di- diploma, much less a college degree. And it, it, it makes zero difference. Yeah. All right, cool, man. I was really uh, passionate about that. Sorry. Really yeah, no, it's all right. I mean, that's that's that. it. No, but I mean, I think that's that's really kind of what we want this podcast to be about, right? We want this podcast to be about, uh, you know, relating to people. And um, I don't, you know, yes, we want we want to teach them, but like, you can't teach. It's very hard to teach someone something if if they don't respect your point of view, right? Yeah. Um. So I, I think it's where important. we came from. Yeah, I think it's important to show like what what our belief system is you know like that they, they want to know where do we stand should we listen to these guys should we not listen to these guys yeah what's so, that quote what's that uh that quote people don't people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care yeah yep yeah. all right cool let's let's keep it rolling uh module two your why um this is really the right price is important. It's it's module one for a reason because we, we need to stop the bleeding, right? We got to get you charging right. We got to get you charging more money so that you can actually keep the lights on and not get your van repoed. Um, I know someone that that happened to. <laughs> um, yeah. with no one, way with, we're going to get through these modules, by the way. No, absolutely not. Part one, maybe, and two. maybe, maybe we'll, yeah, maybe we'll maybe do part two. Three. But yeah, your why well, is important, so keep going. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, that's all right. No, I know someone that got their van repoed with one payment left. Oh man. Yeah. Um, but uh that's why you know module one is so important. That's why it's module one, is because we got to get you charging right. But I mean, your why is really this is the backbone of every single module here. Um yeah. I mean, you you really you sit down and if you go through the process um thoroughly and honestly and hopefully with your better other right um you know if if you could really hone in on where do we want to be in three years five years 10 years 20 years 30 years i don't care what what time frames you sit down and break it into but that's that's going to allow you to develop goals right to to develop milestones that you want to hit um but this is the this is the backbone of the whole thing because without a sufficient why, like going back to the the mountains, right? Module one, the fear of climbing that mountain is uh, I I got to charge so much more money and everyone's going to tell me that they hate me. Um, yeah. Now, module two, you know, this is you get up that mountain on module one, and you know if you've never seen a mountain because you live in the desert or something like that. There ain't just one of them. There's a valley in between another mountain and you can't see that other mountain until you get to the top of the first one. Um, So you get to the top of that, that first mountain with module one, and then there's going to be another big one that you got to climb. Right. Yeah. So we're kind of going down into that valley right now with module two, where it's like, we got to, we got to have something that's going to propel us forward up this second mountain, um, which is coming. (laughs) <laughs> it's coming, coming i promise um yeah. it, it right right in module three it's coming so 
we're, we're kind of sitting in that valley in between module one and three. Like, I got to get the courage to kind of climb up this thing, right? Yeah. So what was your why? Like, w- what was it that kept you propelling forward, even in the face of adversity or in the face of fear, right? Because we're supposed to be talking about fear here. We got a little sidetracked. But... Yeah, well, that's okay. Uh, there's gonna, there, if you listen to us for any length of time, there's going to be some <laughs> sidetrack. Well, initially, I didn't take your why and your daily GPS seriously. I thought that I could skip over that. And I just, I thought that, oh man, I, I, I'll i be all right. Let me just get to the, let me get to the real meat and potatoes of what's really yeah. going on here. And soon after that, after I hit module three and I realized that <laughs> uh, there is going to be things asked of me that, that are going to require me to step out in faith and trust a process that I, have never been through before. So I had to go back and say, okay, you know, I was talking to Allison and and just really trying to come up with what are, what what do we keep putting ourselves through this for? Like, what is the, what's going to keep me getting up off the mat? Because God knows you're, you're not going to make it through far before you just get knocked down. And when you hear when you hear Richard Bainey talk about that, it's one thing to hear him and Laura say it, but then when you get hit just blindsided, it's like, man, I really better have a reason to get up because this is going to keep happening over and over again. And I don't want to make it sound like some um, some task that you can't you can't achieve, but you got to have a reason why because you're going to have plenty of reasons to not keep going. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so just being able, you know, my and, and and I should I should preface this by saying my why has changed as we've progressed through but you know, initially my why was just to get myself off call and then get my guys off call because I heard Laura say that in one of the one of the Audi Talk live episodes back when they were live um, she said, you don't have to be available for everybody 24 hours a day. And all of a sudden my antennas just went up and I was like, what do you mean? I mean, <laughs> blasphemy, <laughs> blasphemy. Yeah. There's no way that that can be the case. And, and when she said that I had already watched a bunch of their episodes. And so they had built up credibility in my mind. And then that's what sold me. And that became my why for the, for a long time, just, if I can, if I can get to a point where I can get myself off call, then I'm going to get my general manager off call, and then I'm going to get the guys off call, and everything, you know, that happened. Yep. And man, I couldn't be prouder. I couldn't be happier for my guys, and you know, it makes a big difference. But that was my why. And just real, just real quick, because this is looking like it's going to turn into a four part series. So no doubt, <laughs> stay. Uh, we're, we'll try and get through three modules each time, I think. Um, okay. Yeah, we'll do game time decision. Um, an audible, we'll, if you will. Mid, yeah, mid-game decision. Yep, we're going to call an audible in honor of the college football playoff championship last night. We'll call it an audible. Yeah. Sore subject. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. Well, at least you were in the playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so it, I think it's important because you said that you, your why has evolved because um, I think there's there's danger there. If you put too many eggs in the basket of your why is going to be getting off call, um, there's danger in feeling like you made it when that happens. Yeah. Um, so I think it's important to just touch on, you know, what what was your next why? And was was there any was there any sort of like gap there right like like as my why evolved i tried to stay like ahead of it right yeah. i try to stay ahead of it so that there's no feeling of i made it it's uh, we we moved the goalpost yeah before we well, even had a chance to kick yeah if you're looking at it like if you're looking at like a graph you know the the line as you as you become more successful with with whatever module you're doing it goes up and then there's a short plateau if you will and then you have to go up 
you know, so that yeah. rest period there, uh, which is not very long, but you kind of assess or I, I assessed, okay, so, so my guys are off call. Now, what, do, now, what do we want to do? What is, what is my why? Um, and then, so, the, so the, the goal was to, you know, and, and, and this may be out of order, but I wanted to get them on performance pay so they could make more money. But you, the, the reason why I wanted to do those things, and it went on and on and on from there, but the reason why I changed, like I started looking inward, like for personal growth, because, you know, early on in my business, and I've said this before to Richard and Laura, uh, our marriage took, Allison and, and my marriage took a dark turn because the, the business was just all consuming. Mm -hmm. So we can go into that in another episode, but yeah. you asked about my why. So it changed for, for personal reasons. I wanted to be able to go on vacation with my family without staying on the phone the whole time. Mm. You know, it's a good one. That's a good you, one. It's it's, it really hits home and it's really, it can get really emotional when you look back and think about all the time that was shared with, you know, your family had to split time and they didn't have all of you because of what the business has done to you. Yeah. And if you're anything like me, even the time that you were there was spent on the phone or checking emails or calling people back or worrying about next week's problems. Um, so you're not, you're not even present when you are present. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be that way. If there, if I can get one thing accomplished from being a coach in this success Academy is that if I can save somebody from having to go through the anguish that I did, because mm -hmm. I just didn't know another way, then it's all worth it for me. Yeah. Same. <clears throat> all right. So we're going to tackle one more module here in part one of our four part series about fear as it relates to the different steps in the a success bunch of Academy. Overachievers. Right. Well, we thought that we were going to get it all done in one episode. I don't know how we thought that, but we could barely get anything. <laughs> we started off with a totally separate topic. <laughs> but hey, that's, such the, that's, the, that's the beauty of it. If you can relate, like, and oh, subscribe, like, like, and subscribe down below. Um, so, uh, module three, everybody's favorite, the right customer slash oh, yeah. the taskmaster oh goodness. it's a doozy just the, a, just the, just the word taskmaster is just oh man brings back just a love ooh. just a love hate relationship yeah my taskmaster was uh put together over many many long nights and a few or many glasses of bourbon yeah <laughs> i remember I, I remember spending so much time like it's got to be focused time it's not just mm -hmm. you know sitting there waiting on a video to play oh yeah man it's it is focused and it is well that's what i would do when i when, when i did mine i you know once everybody went to bed i'd sit down in my kitchen at my kitchen island and i'd have a glass or two of bourbon and i'd just try and get through one right like let's just try and get through one of these sheets right yeah um so the fear for me with with this, I will it's kind of like a two-part module, right? There's there's a yeah. lot that goes into here. So the fear, I'm gonna give you one fear for each part, and then I'll let you do the same. But okay. the fear for me in the first part is this is this is where we're making the decision that we're gonna go into residential service 100 percent right? So the, mm -hmm. the fear there is getting rid of the commercial accounts which are big money, but slow to pay usually mm -hmm. um, and getting rid of the new construction, which is a cash flow nightmare, but again, big ticket items. So it's, it's super comfortable to see a $45,000 job, even if it's broken up into four payments that may or may never come. Um, it's super comforting to know that quote unquote, that's guaranteed money you're going to get over the next X amount of months. So that's the fear for me in that first part when we're making that leap into all residential service is like there's a safety blanket here that I don't really want to pull off. Um, and then going into the test. I mean, the fear for me in the taskmaster is 
the first time you open it up and you, you see all those empty spaces you know you go in and you redo your hhr because you kind of have a little mindset shift now and we're going to redo our hhr we're going to get to what it probably is really supposed to be um and then you put everything in your key and then you go to the example and you're like oh there's like three or four things in there that's great and then you go to that next slide i think it's uh is it appliances i don't know i don't know what it is i think it's appliances i mean pick one they're all they're all yeah. <laughs> but you just you go to the net, you click on that next slide and it's just never ending nothingness in all these different columns and there's just like rows so many columns and numbers oh and there's so many sheets at the bottom it's just like rows the fear for me there was just getting started i mean it was like i know i need to do this but this is such a daunting task i'm i'm I, I, I don't want to say I'm a procrastinator because I, I get the important stuff done. Um, I think most of my procrastination comes from ADD. I just get distracted. Um, but the... and I, I can I've, focus I've, on one thing at a time. That's I can yeah. fix state, which is a strength yeah. and a weakness. But... Yeah. But I think the, the main thing for me, and I, I've had to do a lot of work on this, is if there is a huge task that needs to be done, right? Like pick one, right? The task master or, you know, getting all the paperwork together to file your taxes at the end of the year or, you know, reconciling your QuickBooks. Like if there's something that's going to take a significant amount of energy, I really need to prepare myself to undertake that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like I can't, yeah, I can't, sure. I can't just jump in with both feet, like just open it up and get going. I, I like, I really need to, I need to chew on it and figure out how I'm going to attack this. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Your turn. Well, I just remember when I saw it, I, um, I wanted to know from somebody else, how long, how long is this going to take? Like, is this where I'm going to say, yeah, I'll do everything but this, because this is too far for me, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I talked to Matt Delnay and he said, if you can just do one room a day, um, that's how you can break it up. And that's how you're going to be able to keep going. And um, that worked well for me. But once you get started and let's say you're in the, you're in the kitchen and then you, you, you pick a task and let's say it's the, the cold water angle stop is bad. And then, you know, you, you create that task and then all of a sudden you, it's like you unlock a, a, an avenue in your brain and say, okay, so if I do this, then I can do the hot and the cold. I can do the cold, then I can do the hot, then I can do the hot and the cold. But then I can add the, the hot and cold supply lines one at a time. And then it just, you just start, you just get rolling. And once I, to be honest with you, even though it was a monumental task, because it really takes a plumber's brain to do that, once you get rolling, it's okay. It's just the amount of time you have to be committed to it. And it was so much so that's the only thing that I can remember, the only task or job that I that I did so intently for so long. Once it was done, there was an initial, man, I'm so glad that that's over with. And then the next day I was like, man, I don't I don't know what I'm going to do. I've been wor working on the same thing for <laughs> for a long time. It was like I I missed it in a way, which is really weird. But I quickly got over the <laughs> the missing it. <laughs> but you never you you're never done with it. You're never done with it. You just once you get that one big price <laughs> book done, it's way easier to go back and make adjustments and you know. Yeah. But it was you know mine was the fear of is this going to be the thing that where I say, you know I'm I'm. I'm a good supporter of the million dollar plumber program, but this is the only thing that I'm not going to do, you know? Yeah. And then yep. once I did that and then we got to a piece rate, it was like, Oh, well, this is going to be the thing that I'm doing. You know? <laughs> so it's like that. It's, it's like that. Yeah. They're not, it's not, nothing's going to be easy. And I see people stall out all the time and I'm asking, what have you done this? Oh man, I'm, I'm going, I'm going to, and you can see right then where that's why there's such a small percentage of companies that succeed because it's, there's a ton of reasons not to do something. Yeah. Cool. Well, we got to wrap up, but 
real quick, I just because we're not gonna have another chance and you were all new construction, just touch on the fear there a little bit of of the right customer, finding the right customer and making that switch. Yeah. So the fear for once I defined the right customer and I knew what customer I was going after, it was the fear of letting go. You know, just, just to be clear, the, the customer that we set out after once we got on the right track with MDP is the residential service customer that can pay today. And my fear was letting go of those commercial accounts that even though they were slow to pay, they ended up paying, but it just took so much effort to get the money and get paid. And I felt like, I mean, Richard and Laura talk about this. You feel like you're becoming a bank for somebody that can easily afford what you're charging, but you're the mm -hmm. one that's loading all the bills. And that was a fear letting go. But once you get to where you have leverage and your customers that are in residential, they outweigh the customers that are slow to pay you. You, you kind of get over that fear, but you got to take the step. You can't hold mm -hmm. on to both. And and that's the, I think that's the common thing to do at first. Maybe the baby step forward is to, you know, get the service side going, but you're holding on to whether it's a builder or a commercial account, it's not an ideal situation, but you hold on to it because that's your security blanket. And eventually the residential side has to win out. I mean, it has to win out, but you have to take the step. It's not just going to do it for you. Yeah. Yeah. I was similar. Hold on. I'm just going to hold on to one builder. Um, you know, yeah. I'm just going to hold on to one commercial account. Um, and in the end, you, you end up realizing that you can't do that. But for me, like I had one builder that paid us like a homeowner. We didn't we didn't get paid after rough inspection. We didn't get paid after final inspection. We got paid when the work was done. Um, so and he didn't so it was it was a good one to hold on to. But at, at some point it's like I can't afford to have two guys tied up there, three guys tied up there. We got too many service calls. We gotta go make money now. Yeah, it's just a matter of two different business plans. You know, there's nothing yeah. wrong with those guys that no. I mean, they, they exist. They're successful. It's just not the business plan that you can follow anymore. Yeah. So, all right. We got to wrap up. Uh, you're starting to glitch out a little bit too with your Wi Fi. Um, so, uh, <laughs> um, no, nah, it's just a little bit. You're fine. It was just the last couple minutes. Um, cool. Well, I think this was a good one. Great part one to our new four part series that we just made up 10 minutes ago. Um, Do we have to write it down so we remember what part two is after 15 minutes after we get out of here? I think so. I think you'd be in charge of writing that down and keeping track of that. Um, but for now, we're going to wrap up. So if you guys, if you guys enjoy listening to this, like and subscribe down below and uh, we'll catch you next time. All right. Well, that does it for this episode of the Coach's Corner. Make sure to like and subscribe below and make sure you join us on our next episode to continue to learn how to stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. Thanks for stopping by.